Hello and welcome to our lesson on the algebra of functions. This is going to be from section 2.4 in our text. Let's go ahead and get started. Here we have two functions that are given. We're given that f of x is negative 2x plus 3 and g of x is x squared minus 5. And we're going to start with problem number 1 which says to find f of 3 plus g of 3. So if you're thinking about the algebra of functions, this would be function addition with evaluation. Here they want me to do f of 3 and g of 3 and then add the results. So here's how that works. First, we're going to plug 3 in for x into f of x and that's going to say negative 2 times 3 plus 3 plus and then we're going to plug this 3 in for x into g of x and that's going to give me 3 squared minus 5. Now I, I can either put all of this in the calculator at one time or I can work it out manually. And I think I'll do both. So let's see. We're going to have negative 6 plus 3 plus 9 minus 5. Negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 9 is 6. 6 minus 5 is 1. And let's check with the calculator. So negative 6 plus 3 plus 9 minus 5 or like I said you can input it negative 2 times 3 plus 3 plus 3 squared minus 5 you can put it all in at one time or in steps either way it's going to verify that one okay next we're going to look at problem number three. And it says to find f of 1 minus g of 1. Now, the only thing different here, okay, I'm sorry, there's two things different here. We have a 1 that's being evaluated, and this time we have function subtraction. So f of 1 is going to be negative 2 times 1 plus 3. And here's what's different. Since we have subtraction, the g of 1 is going to need to go in parentheses. So that's going to be 1 squared minus 5. All of that needs to be in parentheses so that the minus applies to all of it. And then we can work that out. That's going to be negative 2 plus 3 minus, now 1 squared is 1, 1 minus 5 is negative 4, and do you see I have minus a negative, which makes that a plus. So altogether, that's going to be negative 2 plus 3, which is 1, plus 4, which is 5. Next, number 5, we're going to have f of negative 2 times g of negative 2. So this time the function operation is multiplication. And since we're multiplying f times g, both of those need to go in parentheses. So f of negative 2 is going to be negative 2 times negative 2 plus 3. All of that needs to go in its own set of parentheses times negative 2 squared minus 5. And it's important to note here, the big set of parentheses, all of that is for g of x or g of negative 2. This was all for f of negative 2. But this set of parentheses right here is because anytime you evaluate a negative number, 
it needs to go in parentheses. If I don't put the negative 2 in parentheses when I square it, it'll end up being negative instead of positive like it should be. Now, this time I am going to go to my calculator because I think it's going to be a little bit easier for me to input this electronically and not screw it up. Parentheses, negative 2 times negative 2 plus 3 times. Now, there's going to be double parentheses there for the negative 2 squared minus 5. And do you see the difference between using the subtraction key and the negative button? It's important to note the difference between the negative and the subtraction. You need to know when to use negative and when to use minus. And equals and negative 7 is the answer. All right, next problem, number 7. And let's scroll down some. Number 7 says to find f of negative 4 divided by g of negative 4. So this time the indicated operation is division. And since we're dividing two functions, again, they're going to need to go in parentheses. So for our f of negative 4, that's going to be negative 2 times negative 4 plus 3. Notice all of f of negative 4 in parentheses. And then I'm going to use this symbol divided by. I need an open parenthesis. And the number I'm evaluating is negative, so it's going to need its own set of parentheses. Negative 4 minus 5, close parenthesis. Again, do you understand that we need these parentheses so that we make sure that we're doing f of negative 4 divided by g of negative 4 that way? And again, I'm going to be using my calculator for that. Oh, and one thing I'd like to illustrate on the Casio is you can actually input this the way it looks. But on my calculator, you can do it as a fraction and do the numerator and denominator that way. And you don't actually need these parentheses. You can just say negative 2 times negative 4 plus 3 and then move to the denominator and do your negative 4 squared minus 5. And do you see you don't actually need these parentheses using the fraction button? Oh, cool. And that's 1. All of that worked for just a 1. For our next set of problems, we're going to switch functions capital F of X is X squared minus 2, capital G of X is 5 minus X. And the capital F and G in this case doesn't mean anything special, but later when you get on up into like trig or calculus, whether the F and the G are lowercase or uppercase may mean something different. But here it just means we have different functions. So our first example we're going to look at here is number 15. And they want us to find f plus g of x. Now what this means, it means I don't have a value to plug in for x. I'm going to work with the x. But the indicated operation is addition. And this does not mean that I'm going to add f and g and multiply it by x. That is not what that means. What it means is it means that I'm going to add f and g and it's going to be a function of x. So here's how this works. We're going to take our f of x, which is x squared minus 2, and we're going to add g of x, which is 5 minus x. And then you need to combine like terms, maybe write it in descending order, and you're done. All right, so I've got an x squared. He's the only x squared I have. And I have a minus x. He's the only x term. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3. And I'm done. That is f plus g.
Next, we're going to look at number 22. And this problem says to find G minus F of X. And here order does matter. G minus F would give a different outcome than F minus G. And here the function operation is subtraction. So we're going to start with G of X, which is 5 minus X minus. Now, since I am subtracting, I am going to need to put f of x in parentheses, minus x squared minus 2. This is critical, because if you don't use the parentheses, you're not going to distribute the negative, and then you won't get the right answer. So let's distribute the negative. That's going to give us 5 minus x minus x squared plus 2. And then we need to combine like terms, maybe write it in descending order would be good math etiquette. We have a negative x squared. We have a negative x. And here 5 plus 2 gives us 7. And that's done. Next, we're going to look at number 19. We're going to go back up and grab number 19. And this one wants us to find f times g of a. Now, the indicated operation is multiplication. And this time, notice they didn't have x. They have a. So that means I am going to replace every x with an a. And then I'm going to do multiplication. Now, remember, just like before, if you're doing multiplication, your f of a is going to need to be in parentheses, and your g of a will need to be in its own set of parentheses. So what is f of a? Well, f of x was x squared minus 2, so f of a will be a squared minus 2. All you do is replace the x with the a. And then g of a... Well, g of x is 5 minus x, so g of a would be 5 minus a. Again, see, all you do there is replace the x with an a. And this is going to be a lot of fun here because I have a binomial times a binomial. Remember, that means the four-letter f word. That's right. We're going to foil it first. 5 times a squared, that's going to give me 5a squared. And then on the outside, that's a negative times a positive makes a negative a times a squared. When you multiply variables, you have to add their powers. And a is understood to be a to the 1. So a squared times a, that's going to give me a cubed. On the inside, negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. And last but not least, negative times a negative makes a positive. 2 times a is 2a. So there is the FOIL method executed correctly. Now to finish it up, we need to combine any like terms and write the polynomial in descending order. We need to write this answer in descending order. So starting with the biggest power first, that's negative a to the third. Next, we have a positive 5a squared. Next, we have a plus 2a. And last but not least, the constant. And that is it for f times g of a. And we have one more that we want to look at, number 21. And this problem says f divided by g of x. f divided by g of x, okay? So the division indicates a fraction. So this is going to be f'd up. It's going to be fractioned up where f is on top and g is on bottom. So what was f of x? f of x was x squared minus 2, and g of x was 5 minus x, 
and this fraction will not reduce. It's not going to factor and have a common factor that will reduce. And so actually that is the answer. That's probably one of the easiest ones we've done in this lesson. Now, there are some cases where the numerator and the denominator would factor and reduce. You'd need to look out for that. And if it would reduce, you need to reduce it to get full credit. But this is the answer for this problem. And that's going to do it for this lesson. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section below. Or you can text me. And thanks for watching.